Hi, I'm Tom R., pastor at Village Church, and I'm pleased to welcome you to this session of Village Connect. We're continuing to read through some of Paul's correspondence from prison. And so for this session, I want to invite you to find 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Read verses 6 through 22. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 22. Read that together, and when you finish, come back and we'll get started with the conversation. So this is a remarkable passage, and there's so much in it. We'll deal with a portion of it in this section, and we'll return to some of this in our next conversation. But it begins with the apostle acknowledging that his time on this earth is coming to an end. He has uh, fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept the faith. There is a sense of peace about it. You can hear it in his writing. And I wonder, what is it that would let us be at peace in that moment? I think for Paul, if, if I understand the text, his sense of peace comes from not that there's not more that he would want to do, but he's, he's been attentive to the things he needed to do. He has, as he said, finished the race. He's kept the faith. There is a strong sense in this man, this apostle, this one who is sent by God, that if he is, as long as he has been attentive to his own calling in his day, then whenever his day ends, he is at peace. He is at peace, but there is also a confession of need from the apostle. It's striking. This strong, courageous, bold man who has withstood prison, has withstood flogging, has withstood being chased out of town and shipwrecked, He's very clear about his need. Timothy, bring to me my cloak that I left with Carpus and Troas. It's cold in this prison. Bring it to me. And bring to me my books. Uh, probably references to books that we would know as the Old Testament. He wants to read through the stories of his faith once again and wrap himself, find himself in these stories. Bring me my books and above all, bring my parchments. Parchments were probably the early writings of the, of the New Testament church. They're probably Christian writings about the life and ministry of Jesus. Bring the parchments so that I can read this story again. But mostly what he needs is people. And he starts going through the list of people in his mind, almost like he has a photo album or, or a collection of those photographs on, on a table. He speaks of Mark and, and of others that have shared in ministry, who have been his brothers and sisters in faith. He collects these people in the imagination of his own mind. And then he says to Timothy, but I need you. Timothy, his son in the faith. Timothy, to whom he had been mentor. Timothy, who, remember in the first chapter, he clearly has some crisis of faith. He says to Timothy, I need you to be my pastor now. I need you to come before winter. Travel gets hard in the winter season. And so if you don't come before winter, you'll have to wait till spring. And Timothy, I don't know, I'll be here in spring. So do your best to come before winter. So the thing that everybody wants to know is what did Timothy do? Did he drop everything? Did he drop everything and, and go quickly? to see Paul? Does he tell everybody at his church and in his work, I'm sorry, I have to go, the apostle needs me now? Does he do that? We don't, we don't, we don't know. But what, what we do know is there are moments in our lives that they come, and when they come, they may not come again. 
There are certain moments and experiences that, that are set before us, and if we do not choose to act on them in that one moment, we may not get another chance. So I'm remembering uh, early in our marriage, I, I, I came home one day and there was on the kitchen counter, there was a birthday card. There was a birthday card there and I just looked at it quickly. And in our, in our household, there are three of the four of us who have our birthdays all within a few weeks of each other. And I saw the card and I commented to Carol, I said, well, this is nice. Uh, who, who's this card for? As soon as I said it, I knew my mistake because the next day was Carol's birthday and my question had revealed I had completely forgotten her birthday. There was no way I was getting out of that. There are some moments that come that once they come, they may not come again. Now birthdays fortunately come again, but you understand what I mean. There's never... There's never been an important relationship in our lives, in marriage, with families, with parents, with children, with friends. Sometimes there's a, a winter that if we try to get through it, we can't get back. He says, Timothy, do your best to come before winter. And I'll confess, it's hard for me to read this and not hope that Timothy dropped everything and he went to the apostle, the apostle who was in many ways the founder of the church of which we are all a part. I hope Timothy went and was his pastor in these last moments. I do. But here's the truth. Not only do we not know whether Timothy went or not, we don't know what else was on Timothy's plate. We don't know what other demands he had when he received this letter. It's easy to assume he just drops everything and goes when we only know this side of the correspondence. But we don't know what other needs Timothy was juggling. And here's the point. That's always the case with us. We are always trying to choose what is the most important among many demands and many needs. And it requires wisdom to know, what do I need to address right now? What, what, what friendships do I need to pay attention to now? What relationships do I need to pay attention to now? Because if I don't do that now, it may not come again. It's never just, we never make those decisions in a vacuum. It's always, they're always made with a collection of demands and responsibilities and overscheduled calendars. But I think what helps, I think what helps in making those decisions is to do what Paul did and gather the relationships, the pictures of those that we love and who need us, to gather those around, to have those in front of us, and paying attention to those relationships. Choose how we spend each day. Choose how we pay attention to each day. Because there's probably somebody right now who needs you. There's probably somebody right now who needs you to be a friend, who needs you to be uh, a presence. And there's probably somebody you need. So if there's somebody you need, let them know. Ask them to come before winter. And if you think there's somebody who needs you, Somebody just needs you to be attentive. Do that before it's too late. Because of this, I'm confident. If we live that way, when the time comes for our departure, as Paul says, we will feel at peace, like we have fought the good fight, like we have finished the race, like we've kept the faith.